cases of abuse that are documented by Amnesty International. The previous government thought it had entered the Comity of Nations by disarming and surrendering and dismantling its WMD program in 2003 and releasing the ultra-conservative uh, jihadists in the Libya Islamic Fighting Group, about 300 of them, about uh, two years ago as part of a reconciliation process saw over by a consulting house similar to PricewaterhouseCoopers and Safe Al Islam. By late June of 2011, 16 months ago, the Libyan government was ready under the auspices of Musa Ibrahim and Saif al-Islam al-Gaddafi to have immediate elections. We declined and liquidated a large amount of their population, creating a nation deeply scarred by violence and division, which was totally unnecessary. So the blood is on Hillary Clinton's hands and can be shared by all NATO countries, Turkey and the Saudi and Gulf state petromonarchies, in particular Qatar. All of these provided boots on the ground in violation of the UN 1973. We said that they were special forces, but when you take all of the NATO countries, the thousand troops of Qatar at least that were sent, the uh, hundred or so of uh, Turkey, you're talking about just the special forces alone, uh, probably being over 2,000 uh, men in Libya, plus CIA. And Libya only had an army the size of the New York City Police Department. From now on, you will have all new material. Uh, this is a prelude which I often cite. So when I describe what has happened, we each of us, a small part of us, our humanity dies as well. For you and I are responsible for inaction and calling this for what it really was. If a party is willing to uh, sit for peace talks and we decline, bombing the country cannot be considered humanitarian, at best blundering, but most likely mass murder. Bonnie Walid has been fiercely assaulted on the anniversary of the slaughter of Gaddafi. The immolation of the men and women in his caravan, the beheading of his dreadlocked guards, and the summary execution of 67 of the men in the caravan who had been captured, which is now the subject of a Human Rights Watch report which has concluded and reported. But the blood sport was enjoyed by many. A U.S. drone called the attack in as the caravan departed Sirte. A French jet launched missiles into the fleeing caravan from the city of Sirte immolating the caravan, leaving us uh, charred blackened bodies still sitting in their seats. Sirte was already a war crime site, as NATO had bombed in apartment buildings and hospitals in addition to other sites due to snipers' presence. The city was encircled and collectively punished. People leaving the city as refugees were abused, beaten, and arrested, if suspected of having sympathies for their government. No supplies were allowed in, so they were essentially allowed to have the choice of either starving to death and dying of lack of water or leaving the city and being severely beaten, tortured, and arrested if their names happen to be on a list of people that might have been sympathetic to the old government. And today the blood sport returns. Thomas Gaddafi, the youngest son of Gaddafi, and the head of, I believe, what was called the 32nd Battalion, already severely disfigured um, had, was killed after capture in a crossfire, just like his father. Most likely he was executed in cold blood. Many, many civilians have been killed. He was thought dead. He was announced dead to hide him. And here is a uh, Al Jazeera report, which I will put in the headlines, showing the sort of damage that occurred to uh, uh, Bani Walid, We'll get to that in a moment. <clears throat> and uh, here is a picture of Thomas. Now, to give you uh, an idea of what it was like to be in Beni Walid at this time, if you allow me. <laughs> بل كيف يسكن الالم يوما وكل وقت جرح جديد كيف ينام الالم يوما والدم يصرخ في الوريد بل كيف يسكن الالم يوما وكل وقت جرح جديد كيف ينام الآن يوما والدم
الدم يصرخ في الوريد. That's probably seared. Uh, it's horrific what's happened in Baniwali. There were people brought in that looked like they had chemical weapons burns. And these are our people that we armed. Additionally, the spokesman for the Libyan government, who I found to be an articulate, intelligent man, a PhD, Musa Ibrahim, has barely survived the same uh, fate as Kamis. Here is what looks like fairly indisputable proof, if that is indeed Musa Ibrahim. I haven't analyzed uh, his facial features enough to be 100% sure. Apparently, he's been transported to Tripoli. Um, this one looks, uh, here we have the photo, so it's unlikely that it's uh, false. And I am very sad. I knew for a long time that Musa Ibrahim was probably in Bani Walid. And I never uttered a word about it because the last thing I wanted to do was to help get him killed. Here is my prophecy from the day after Gaddafi's death. The ties to Al Qaeda, the Miserata, and their brigade. I already told you about. And apparently, the rumor is that his son Saif, along with the spokesman for the Libyan government, is a very wonderful, articulate man named Dr. Musa Ibrahim. In my opinion are being transported to Mizrata. I hope it's another false rumor. My blood goes cold for me, Mizrata, for a loyalist is like Maradur if you're Frodo. And indeed, well, let's hear one last thing I say. <clears throat> they will be murdered violently. Any leader of the loyalists who falls at the hands of the Mizratans dies within hours. And this is exactly what happened to Gaddafi's son. He was captured supposedly transported to Mizrata after being wounded and died of his wounds, and they say died in a crossfire. He was executed in cold blood 99%. I want to give the Mizratans more benefit than they give their uh, victims and, uh, and say we don't have uh, the information yet. Uh, but if he was severely wounded, there is a hospital in Bani Walid. The city had already been entered. He should have been treated at that hospital and not transported to Mizrata. So for those who wish to rewrite history and sanitize it of any objections to the NATO installation of what they thought would be a pro-Western regime, as this was not a civil war initially, it was an insurrection that ultra-conservative, violent interpreters of Islam were armed by the West, the Libya Islamic fighting groups reconstituted members, and the Sunni petro-monarchies in violation of UN 1973, the very resolution we wrote, we organized and orchestrated all of this. For those who rejoice in giving Gaddafi an anniversary present of the death of his son and many of his supporters, will they reap a bitter or a sweet harvest? So, uh, there is a good article uh, that was written um, by Mustafa Fatouri, who is an independent Libyan academic and journalist and winner of the European Union Samir Kassir Award for the Freedom of the Press in 2010, uh, to help us determine whether the purging of loyalists in Bani Walid through its bombardment and invasion was a good idea or not. Let's say that you don't have to listen to me. You can hear it from Mr. Mustafa Fetouri, and all of this will be posted in the comments. Save Bani Walid to save Libya is the name of his article. While mediation efforts are still going on, it's the last chance for the GNC, that is the government of Libya, to act wisely and correct itself by first annual its notorious decision immediately activate the long overdue national reconciliation process insists Mustafa Fetouri. Now this article um, is translated from Arabic so there may be an occasional uh, grammatical error. The siege of Bani Walid, 180 kilometers southwest of Tripoli, which had a population of about 85,000 prior to the conflict uh, has been in place for nearly two weeks now. It was publicly authorized, encouraged, and approved by Libya's newly elected General National Conference. I'd like to point out that the man who's running Libya now uh, is CIA connected, the one that they uh, appointed to be the, the head of the state after the murder of Chris Stevens, which is why I entitle this article, One White Death Screams Louder Than 10,000 African Deaths. Reports from inside the city speak of increasingly depleted supplies of food, water, and other necessities. Sporadic, indiscriminate rocket bombardments are daily routine, especially around the east of the city. 
Al Mardum Valley. The closest to the front line have so far been under daily fire, killing five civilians and injuring a dozen so far. This was written a week ago. It's gotten much worse since then. Libyan rights groups join hands. Their international counterparts in condemning the siege, calling on the Libyan authority to lift it immediately. So he, even Libyan rights groups, in the current in Libya, you are not allowed to organize politically if you're suspected of having sympathies for the former government or be opposed to the current government. So these rights groups are not at all uh, uh, known publicly as being particularly sympathetic to the former government. Uh, they have called for the immediate lifting of this siege. Amnesty International in particular has been the forefront of calls to lift the siege and allow supplies to enter their city, as well as free movement of people into and out of Bani Walid. Home to Libya's largest tribe, the Warfala, Bani Walid has been the safest city in Libya since the war ended last October. The local population attribute this to the fact that no militias are able to enter the city. So there's no thugs around to brutalize you, extort you, kidnap you, beat you, or murder you. I'm, uh, you can, I hope, tell when I'm making the sides. <clears throat> to enter the city from outside, and only its own people volunteered to protect it. They are organized in local defense committees in charge of daily security checkpoints on the outskirts of the city. Having seen what the revolutionary brigades have done to their houses, farmland, and other personal properties when they entered the city last October, locals were determined not to let any armed individuals to enter their city.